Um, I think it's going okay. Um, today we're going to continue our pre-calculus lectures with section 7.3. Um, so to get the camera, this camera right here that's kind of in my way, um, in order to get it to focus on my paper, I'm going to have to share my screen. So give me one second while I do that. And then I will pull up, there we go. So um, 7.3 is of course more um, trigonometry because that's what this entire chapter is going to be covering. And in this uh, section, we have computing values of trigonomic functions of acute angles, okay? Now, the first part says, find the exact values of the trigonomic function for pi over four or 45 degrees, okay? So we're going to have um, to calculate those things. Now, it does say, um, in the triangle below, so they're referring to this triangle over here. It says, in the triangle below, measure the remaining angle. So we know that a triangle has 45 degrees. I'm sorry, a triangle has 180 degrees. So all the angles this angle and this angle and this angle should add up to equal 180 degrees. And we already know that according to this little box that this one is 90 degrees. And we know that this angle is 45 degrees. So if we wanna figure out what the missing angle is, all we have to do is take 180 minus 45 minus 90. Um, so then, Oops, not sure what's happening here. Resume. Okay, I think I fixed the issue. So we have 180 minus 45 minus 90, and that gives us 45. So this angle will also be 45 degrees. And if this angle is 45 degrees with side A equaling one, then this angle will also have the same side. So B will also equal one. So this is gonna be 45 degrees or pi over four, same thing. This is just degree um, version representation. And then this is your radian representation. Now the missing side is going to be one, just like it is for the other 45 degree angle. So that measurement is going to be one unit. Then it says use the Pythagorean theorem to find the length of the hypotenuse. So we know that the Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So we have one squared plus one squared equals c squared. One plus one is two, or we could say that c equals um, the square root of two. Now, normally when you take the square root, you get plus or minus. However, since we're talking about the length of a side, it doesn't make sense for us to use the negative answer of um, negative square root of two because the length cannot be negative. So C has to be the positive square root of two. Now, um, for the next part, it says find the exact values of the trigonomic functions for pi over six equal to 30 degrees and pi over three equal to 60 degrees. So in this um, situation, it says manipulate the triangle below to find the measure of side A. And so one of the things that we can do is if I were to like mirror this triangle over itself, now I'm not fantastic at drawing, but if I were to mirror it over itself, um, I would end up with this image here, and this would still be a right angle. This would then be a 60 degree angle, and this would be a 30 degree angle. So, and I would still have this side C equal to two. They still share the side B, and this, because it is a mirror image, is also A. Now, but what's happened here is that we've now created what is called an equilateral triangle, 
okay? When all of the angles are the same, right? This is 60, this is 60, and 30 and 30 together make 60. And just like before, if this angle has a side of two and this angle is the same angle, so therefore it has the side of two, this angle of the giant triangle I've created now should have the same um, side length over here. So this length should also equal two. So what that tells me is that this side A plus this side A should equal that same value two, which means two A should equal two or A should equal one. So then now if I take my triangle again, I can look at it again just so that I can see it a little bit better. This is 60 degrees, this is 30 degrees, the hypotenuse is two, we now know this is one, okay? And then part B says for me to use the Pythagorean theorem to find the measure of B. So what I'll do is I'll say A squared plus B squared equals C squared, which is two. So two squared. So then I get one plus B squared equals four. If I minus one, I get that B squared equals three. And if I take the square root, then I get that B equals the square root of three. So now I know the measurement of this side. So, oh, I didn't do number four up here and I'm about to do number three down here. So up here, number four, totally skipped over it, I'm sorry. It says use the trigonomic functions to find the exact values of the six trigonomic functions. So I'm going to use a definition. So I know that sine of 45 degrees is going to equal the opposite over the hypotenuse. So I'm going to use this one. It doesn't matter because they're both 45, but this is the one I'm going to use. So when I talk about opposite and adjacent, I'm talking about to this angle. So the opposite over the hypotenuse means one over square root of two. But if I rationalize that, it's square root of two over two. And then I'm going to do cosine of 45 degrees. So I get um, the adjacent over the hypotenuse, which is also one and then over square root of two. And when I rationalize, I get square root of two over two. Then we're going to do tangent of 45 degrees. So that would be opposite over adjacent, which means one over one, or just one, if I simplify it. Then I have um, cosecant of 45 degrees, which is the hypotenuse over the opposite, which reduces to just square root of two. We have secant of 45 degrees, which is the hypotenuse over the adjacent, which is one here. So when I simplify, I just get the square root of two. And then finally, cotangent of 45 degrees is going to be the adjacent over the opposite, but still one over one so that I get the value one, okay? Now when we come over here to this other triangle, now we're using this triangle. This one's gonna be a little bit trickier because I have to find um, the exact six values for both angles. These angles are different this time. So I have to do um, the six trigonomic functions for one angle and then the six trigonomic functions for the other angle. So first we're gonna do is sine of 60 degrees. So I have to use his opposite over the hypotenuse. So square root of three over two. Then cosine of 60 degrees. That would be the, it's adjacent over the hypotenuse. So one over two. Then when I do the tangent of 60 degrees, I have to do the opposite over the adjacent. So square root of three over one or just square root of three. Then the cosecant of 60 degrees is going to be the um, hypotenuse over the opposite. So two over square root of three. And if I rationalize that, I get two square root of three over three. Then we have secant of 60 degrees, which is supposed to be the hypotenuse over the adjacent. So two over one or just two. 
and then tangent of 60 degrees, which, or I'm sorry, cotangent of 60 degrees, which should be the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So the adjacent over the hypotenuse, no, I'm sorry. Cotangent should be the adjacent over the opposite. So adjacent over opposite. And if I rationalize that, I get square root of three over three. Now for the 30 degree angle, so I'm gonna do all the same six trig functions, but using the 30 degree angle. So sine of 30 degrees, here's 30 degrees. It's over here on this side. So the opposite is now the one, hypotenuse is still two, so one over two. And then cosine of 30 degrees is going to be its adjacent over the hypotenuse. And then its tangent is going to be its opposite over its adjacent which rationalizes to square root of three over three. Then I can do the cosecant of 30 degrees, which would be the hypotenuse over the opposite, which is two. Secant of 30 degrees, which is the hypotenuse over the um, adjacent side. And if I rationalize it, I get two square root of three over three. And then finally, the cotangent of 30 degrees, which is it's adjacent over its opposite, which is just square root of three. Okay. So now we found all the six trig functions for both of those. Now using all of that information, we can fill in this chart. So I literally just took all the information that we did, sine of 30 degrees, I put it here, cosine of 30 degrees, I placed that number here, tangent, so on and so forth. So I just filled out the table with the exact two numbers we just found, okay? Now we get into our examples. So eventually you want to memorize this, okay? And so, this is going to come in handy very, very much so when we get into um, yeah. when we get into our unit circle. So eventually we're going to start using a unit circle. And I mean, you will get to use a note sheet on the test, so you could have the unit circle on your on your note sheet while you're taking the test. Although I promise you, if if you're going to want to get things done quickly, and you're going to want to eventually be able to do trigonometry without having um, to have a note sheet, for instance, if you're in calculus and your calculus teacher doesn't let you have a note sheet, or you're just um, challenging yourself to really, really learn trigonometry, um, then you really need to learn to master the unit circle. And so you will practice that quite a few times in these lecture videos, just because I feel it's really, really important. Plus the unit circle has a lot of information on it, and it's pretty big if you try to write everything in there. So it does help, and your, your note sheet does have to be handwritten um, when you're taking the test. So it cuts out a lot of that. If you can just, once a test starts, just scribble down the unit circle on page, on your first um, problem, and then you have it there. And or just draw it every time you need to reference it and you'll have it. Um, so I don't typically, I mean, you could use the calculator, but sometimes the calculators are not gonna give you these exact answers, okay? Sometimes they will and sometimes they won't. So you have to be very, very careful. It is going to help you so much though if you can do the unit circle on your own, okay? Um, especially for problems that are not telling you to use the calculator. Like this problem right here, it doesn't tell me to use the calculator. It just tells me to find the exact value for each expression. So if it's not telling me to use a calculator, I shouldn't be using the calculator. The only way you'll know that you're allowed to use the calculator to compute the value is if you start seeding answers that say round to two decimal places, round to the nearest tenth, that indicates that you're gonna need the decimal representation of the answer. And in that case, you are allowed to use the calculator. 
But if it's asking for exact values, most likely it's not wanting you to use the calculator. You need to be able to do these on your own without that calculator. And so, like I said, you can have a unit circle with you and available and ready, or you can learn to just memorize it and be able to draw it on your own, okay? We'll practice that once we finish um, or get in the middle of uh, 7.4. So, um, yes. So here we have sine squared of pi thirds and tan squared of pi thirds. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write, rewrite this as sine of pi thirds squared and tangent of pi over four squared. And then we know that sine of pi over three is square root of three over two. And we know that tangent of pi over four is one. So then when I square this, I get three. And when I square two, I get four. And when I square one, I get one. And if I get a common denominator and I add these together, I'll end up with seven fourths as the final exact answer. Now here, sine of 60 degrees, Remember, um, 60 degrees is pi over three. Oh, it's already there. And 30 degrees is pi over six and 45 is pi over four. So now I'm doing sine of 60 degrees. So that's going to be three, uh, square root of three over two and then cosine of 45 degrees, which is square root of two over two. So when I multiply these together, I get it's the square root of six over four. Now the square root of six does not simplify or reduce. So this will be the final answer. Now cosine of pi over three, here's pi over three, cosine is one half minus cotangent of pi over four, which is one. And then if I combine like term or get a common denominator, I end up with negative one half. And that is the exact value. So you can use this chart. Um, right now, you could probably have it as a reference if you write it down on a piece of paper and use it while you're taking the problem, the homework. But eventually, we'll do the unit circle and you'll be able to get this information from that unit circle. So example two is use a calculator to approximate the values of the trigonomic functions. So it wants me to do cosine of 15 degrees. To two decimal places. Now I'm going to show you two different things because it all depends on what mode your calculator is on. Now I don't know if you can see that but right there real tiny let me focus. Nope it didn't do it. It did it for like a second. Anyway it says degree right there. It says D-E-G. I know it's really blurry and you can't see it, but it does say D-E-G for degree, which means that my mode is in degree mode, okay? Which means I can type in cosine of 15 and it automatically knows that that is 15 degrees. And if I hit enter, I get this weird thing that is not a decimal. That is the exact answer. If I want to have the decimal, I have to hit the double arrow here at the bottom. And then it gives me the decimal representation. So this is 0 0.97 because the third decimal place five will make that six go up. Now, if my calculator is not in degree mode, if it's in radian mode, I have one of two options. I can either correct that and go to mode and make sure that it's in degree mode or I can convert my 15 degrees into radians and then just type in the, answer, the, the problem in radian mode. So essentially what you're doing is you're doing 15 degrees times um, pi over 180 degrees. And so what do you get? You get cosine of, um, let's see, 15 over 180. is 12, so I end up with a pi over 12, one pi over 12. And so I could type cosine of pi over 12. And that's the radian version of the angle. So 15 degrees is the same thing as pi over 12. And again, it gives me that exact answer, but if I hit the double arrow, it gives me the 0 0.97.
So just keep that in mind that you can either toggle back and forth between degree mode and radian mode in your calculator, or you can just convert what you have into whatever mode you have. So if I was given um, like this one, this one says secant 10. This, because it doesn't have the little degree symbol, this is in radians. And so in my calculator, I could type in, well, I could type in secant 10, and it will give me the answer because I'm already in radian mode. If I was in degree mode, I would have to take those radians and convert them into degrees. And how do you do that? You take 10 over 180 degrees over pi. And so you end up with 1800 over pi. And so you could type in secant of 1800 over pi if your calculator is in degree mode. But my calculator currently, because of the last problem, is in radian mode. So I could type in secant 10 just like that. The only problem is there's no secant button on my calculator, okay? So really you cannot type in secant 10 in your calculator. What you can type is the um, fraction version of it. Secant is the same as co one over cosine of the same angle. And that I can type in the calculator. So I'm gonna hit my fraction, I'm gonna type in one, and downstairs I'm gonna have cosine of 10. I'm already in radian mode, so that 10 radians is perfect. And you get negative 1.19 if I round it to two decimal places. And that's it. Now, let's verify that that's what I would have got if I did it in degree mode. So here again, I would have had to have typed one over cosine of 1800 over pi. So let's go to our mode, put it in degree mode, and then do one over cosine of 1800 over pi and close the parentheses. And it does give me that exact same value. So you really have to be careful what mode your calculator is in and what you're typing in as your angle. If your angle is in degrees, use degree mode. If your, is in, if your angle is in radians, make sure your calculator is in radiant mode. If you don't wanna bother yourself with changing your mode of your calculator back and forth, then you'll have to convert the angles to the appropriate measurement as needed, okay? So example three says, model and solve applied problems involving right triangles. It says, find the distance from A to C. So this dotted line here is what they want to know. Um, across the gorge illustrated in the figure. And so they give me a measurement. They give me some information. They don't give me any information about these two sides. But I want to know something about this. So what I need to do is consider the relationship to the, to the angle. Okay. I have the angle. And I know a measurement that is adjacent to it, and I know a measurement that is opposite of it. What trig function involves the adjacent side and the opposite side? And there's two of them. There's tangent, and then there's cotangent. However, on my calculator, you'll notice there's no cotangent on my calculator, which means I'm gonna choose to use tangent. Now, it doesn't mean I couldn't use cotangent. All it means is I would have to type in one over cotangent. Um, so it's a little bit different. But I highly recommend when you're choosing, just choose tangent and not cotangent, okay? So I'm gonna use tangent. So tangent of 35 degrees is going to be the opposite, which is x, over the adjacent, which is 100. And I can multiply both sides by x, and I get that this expression is equivalent to the measurement of that side. So I can type that in there, but notice it's in degrees. And luckily the last thing I typed in my calculator was in degree mode. So I can type 100 tangent of 35, and it will automatically understand that it means degrees. And so then I get 70 x, is approximately 70.0207 dot dot dot, but they usually make me round it to the nearest foot. So it's actually, the answer is gonna be 70 feet. 
So pay attention to the directions in the homework as to how far they want you to round um, that particular answer. Okay, now we have another example. So this line, I think it's easier when you see it in the homework problem, just because it already has the image for you. Here they want us to draw it, okay? So it says a meteorologist finds um, the height of a cloud using an instrument called a cielo, cielo, I can't say, cielo meter. And it consists of a light projector and that directs a vertical light beam up to the cloud. So if I'm imagining that correctly, it's a cloud here and then you've got this light projector. Um, that's sending a vertical beam to the cloud and then and a light detector that scans the cloud to detect the light beam so once you have this beam going in there you've got another thing over here on the side that's a light detector um, and you would assume that the ground is flat right so then that creates a 90 degree angle here. Now it says that the light detector on December 1st, 2000 at Midway Airport in Chicago, the scalometer, scalometer, I can't say it, <laughs> with a base of 300 feet was employed to find the height of the cloud cover. So this base here would have been 300 feet. And it even tells me that um, if the elevation of the light detector is 75 degrees, so how far did it elevate that is 75 degrees, what is the height of the cloud cover? So they want me to figure out what is this height here, okay? And so again, we have to use this information. So here's my angle. I am trying to find this measurement, the opposite, but I do have the adjacent. So what uh, trigonomic function gives us that kind of relationship? Again, that's tangent, opposite and adjacent. So the tangent of 75 degrees equals the opposite over the adjacent. And so if I multiply both sides by 300, I end up getting that 300 tan of 75 degrees equals H. And I am still in degree mode, so I can type in 310 of 75, and it'll do everything I need it to do. Now, it does ask you to, in the homework, it asks you to round to the nearest foot. So I'm going to say it's 1120 feet, because this 6 will cause the 9 to go to 10, which means I can only put one digit there, the 0, and the 1 will carry, making it 1120. Okay. We've got another example here. It says, to measure the height of Lincoln's caricature um, on Mount Rushmore, two sightings 800 feet from the base of the mountain are taken. So, and again, in the homework, you're given an image. So I'm, I cannot draw, I'm gonna try to draw. Like, I don't know if that's, I've never even been to Mount Rushmore, so I don't know what it looks like. I'm just gonna imagine there's a bunch of little faces. I don't know which one's his. I'm just gonna assume it's one on the end so I can draw my calculator. So we've got his face here, right? <laughs> Again, I cannot draw, so I'm not even trying. But the point is, is that they took two measurements, okay? So 800 feet apart. So they're gonna take, let me read the rest of it so I can help me draw. Two sightings 800 feet from the base of the mountain taken. So here's the mountain, right? And then here's 800 feet. Okay, so this is the base of the mountain, and then that's 800 feet out. Now, if the angle of elevation to the bottom of Lincoln's face is 32 degrees, so then that angle right there, I'm trying to draw it. This angle is 32 degrees. Um, and elevation to the top, so this angle right there is 35 degrees. Oh, well, it's 35 degrees from the base. So it's actually like this. 
this is 35 degrees. So be careful there, not that. This little measurement would actually only be three, right? Because 32 and then to get to 35, you only need three more degrees. So that's more accurate. Um, and it says, what is the height of Lincoln's face? So they actually, if I connect this, they want to know this measurement here. They want to know that measurement there, okay? So this one's gonna be a lot trickier because you do have to do two things, okay? So let me draw it better, um, just so you can see it a little bit better. So you've got this one triangle where you've got the 800 feet, um, and then this is the bottom of his face, and that's 32 degrees. Then you've got this other triangle, which goes to the top of his face, a little bit more realistic, where this is only three more degrees, which makes the entire angle 35 degrees. And then of course it comes, that's the top of his head, okay? So we really have two right triangles there. We've got one right triangle, that looks like this with the 32 degrees and 800 feet. And then you've got another triangle that goes a little bit higher and it's 35 degrees, but still 800 feet at the base, okay? So if you wanna know how big the face is, you basically have to find this guy's height, which is gonna chop off right here and then find this guy's height and subtract the two, and then you'll know how tall the face is, okay? So let's do the big one minus the little one, right? That's usually how you subtract. So if I wanna take the bigger measurement, the bigger height, I'm gonna to have to do, um, let's see. Again, we're trying to find this whole thing. So this is the entire height, I'll call it X. We'll call this one y. So we know that the height of Lincoln's face is going to be the x height minus the y height, right? Now let's try to see how we're gonna figure out x. We're gonna say the tangent of 35 degrees equals opposite over adjacent. And then the tangent of 32 degrees is um, same thing. It's opposite over adjacent. So we get 810 of 35 degrees. 35 degrees minus 800 tangent of 32 degrees. Now, in my calculator, I am in degree mode since the last problems I've been working on. If I wasn't, I personally would just switch the mode. So I'm gonna type in 835 minus 800 tangent of 32. And I get this number and it normally tells you to round to the nearest foot. So I'm gonna say height is about 60 feet. So his face is about 60 feet um, tall or long, okay? So this one you really had to draw. Now you get a little bit lucky, the picture um, in the homework does, they do give you this, but you are gonna have to visually be able to separate it into the two images and then know which one to subtract from which, okay? Okay, and I do have a couple more problems that I noticed were not in the guided notes there. Um, so I wanted to write them down and make sure that we at least talk about them so that you have some examples when you um, go to attempt to do the problem. So um, for the first one, I, it says, let f of x equal sine of x, let g of x equal cosine of x, and then find the value of f plus g of 30 degrees. So what this means is it means f of 30 degrees plus g of 30 degrees. So f is sine, so that means take sine of 30 degrees, and cosine is um, 30 degrees, or g is cosine of x, so we're gonna do cosine of 30 degrees. Now, 
depending on the problem, if they want me to give them the exact answer or a decimal answer is going to tell me whether or not I can use the calculator. And I think, I think, I think I picked this problem, this, this calculator for a reason because it does give us the exact um, answer. So let me verify that by trying one, okay? So sine of 30, I am in degree mode and I hit it. Yes, it gives me one half. That's not the one I'm worried about. The one with the square root, cube root, the square root of two and the square root of three, those are the ones I wanna see if it gives it to us. So it's cosine of 30 degrees and it does, yay. That helps a lot, okay? So then now I have this expression. Really the only thing I could do with it is do this and that's it, okay? So this would be the exact answer. If they do say round to a certain decimal place, then you literally could take one plus the square root of three over two and then just hit the double arrow and it'll give you the decimal. So two places would be 1.37, okay? So just pay special attention to the directions because you could be doing everything correct it's just a matter of how you're entering your answer that it's not liking, okay? Um, the next one we have here is number nine. So it says, this time it says, it says F is sine and H is two X. And it wants you to do F of H of pi over four. What that means is F of H of pi over four. So you kind of have to start from the inside out. So the first thing I'm gonna do is evaluate what H of pi over four is. So that means I'm going to take this h function and plug in pi over 4. Well, this reduces, and so I'm left with just f of pi over 2. And then what does that mean? That means plug in pi over 2 for x in the f function. So I end up with sine of pi over 2. Um, now, I know what my unit circle looks like, so I know the answer to this is 1 but you can verify in your calculator. I don't think we've gotten to the point yet where, um, be careful, this is in degree mode. So make sure you go to mode and put it into radians before you keep going, okay? So I'm gonna hit enter and I do get one. But that's what I mean by you knowing what your, your unit circle looks like helps you to evaluate the trigonomic equations like that without having to go take some time to use the calculator or do any of that. It just helps a lot, especially when you get to calculus. Okay, so this problem is a little um, involved, so we're going to work on it. And it says a pool player located at x, which I didn't put x, but he's located over here, okay, wants to shoot the white ball off the top cushion and hit the black ball dead center. He knows from physics that the white ball will come off a cushion at the same angle as that at which it hit the cushion. So they even draw in the image the two angles are going to be exactly the same. So they use theta to represent both. Okay. It says if the deflection angle is 48 degrees, where on the top cushion should he hit the white ball? And it tells me that here's my white ball. So if I just draw a straight line there, this is one foot distance from that corner. And if I draw a straight line this way, or I'm sorry, this height here from the ball to the edge of the cushion is three feet. And this distance here, if I draw the straight line forward is one foot, okay? So we know those bits of information. So we know that this is one foot and we know that this measurement is three feet. Now, I am given enough information um, to do this particular problem. And actually, if I'm not mistaken, that is not included. So when I drew my little doodads here, I drew them too far. So it's just inside the cushion that these measurements are taken. It does not include the cushion, okay? So it starts here and then goes that way. So it is in fact true that 
that this measurement from the cushion to the ball is one foot, from the ball to that cushion is three feet. And so I need to hit the cushion right here, okay? Now I do know that this is 45 degrees, so, or 48 degrees, I'm sorry. So I really only need to take that one um, triangle and work with that. I know this is 48 degrees and I know that this is three feet. What I need to know is I need to know this measurement here, okay? So we know that we could take the opposite and the adjacent because this is a right angle here. So a tangent of 48 degrees has to equal um, the opposite, which is three over this question mark. Um, we'll call it Y, just because I already have an X over here, okay? So how do I solve this? I'll multiply both sides by Y. I get that Y times tangent of 48 degrees equals three. And then if I divide by tangent of 48 degrees, I get three over tangent of 48 degrees. So I get that Y equals, now when I come over here to type it, my calculator is in radian mode. So I gotta go mode, put it in degree mode, and then I can say three over the tangent of 48 and close the parentheses, I get that it's about 2.7012. It will tell you um, how to round it. So I'm going to round it to the tenth place. I cannot remember what the homework assignment tells you to round it to. So it's approximately 2.7 feet. Okay. So um, then what am I going to do? This now I know is 2.7 feet. So where am I gonna hit it? The one foot plus 2.7 feet, which equals 3.7 feet from the top left um, pole. I don't know what you call these. I'm sure it has the answers in the um, pocket. I guess that's what it's called. I haven't played pool in such a long time, I forgot. <laughs> um, but yeah, it would be 3.7 feet from that top left pocket, okay? And it probably has the words already for you. You just need to type in the answer and it may have the units or it may ask you to type in the units. But that's pretty much it. So we actually got through this whole entire lesson within 45 minutes. Um, 7.4 is just a little bit longer, um, but hopefully we get everything done within an hour and a half total of time, um, which is a lot less than I expected for this particular section. So it's not too, too bad. But I'm gonna go ahead and stop the video here and then we'll do 7.4 in a different um, video.